Hi there and welcome to this video for Track It 2020. Uh, this video is going to be looking at the web API for Track It. Uh, the API allows you to obviously integrate with different uh, interfaces. So if you want to bring data into Track It or, or, or take it out, then there's a number of calls that you can use to in order to do that. Um, I'm guessing this will obviously get built as time goes on. But just to give you a quick idea, uh, all the documentation is available on the BMC website. So if you do go into the documentation here for Track It 2020, which is the latest version, you'll see down in the left hand side, there is a section for Web Services API. And then if you expand that, it talks about the authentication. It talks about the various different types of APIs you've got. So. I'm just going to give you a quick example on the web APIs for for tickets. So you'll see here with tickets you can um, you can do get calls uh, and then you can also do posting as well. So what I'm going to do for this particular example is we're going to do a post ticket. So what this will do is it will add information into track it. And just to give you a flavor, uh, all the fields you can populate, you'll see that there is a list of fields you can populate. So we'll do a quick demonstration of that. There's all the field names for track it. So if you are using custom fields, such as the custom dates or the custom text, you'll see the sequence there. We'll use uh, 85 for this one, we'll populate custom text one. Okay, and then if I just quickly minimize that, uh, again, we will see there an example. So when you're pushing out the information, the, the body looks needs to look roughly like this, and that will be the response. So let's have a quick look how that will look inside of Track It. So I've got a virtual machine, which we will go into. Now you can see I've got this on server 16 here. So there's my URL for Track It. Uh, we're going to be using Swagger for this. So the Track It Web API uh, simply is server 16. So your server name slash Track It slash Web API slash Swagger slash UI slash Index. So we can see all of the different calls that we can do. Uh, if we look at the ticket, let's expand that one. And we've got the post ticket. So we're going to, um, instead of actually creating one, which we could do here with the post tickets here, we're going to update a ticket for this. So first of all, let me create a ticket in Track It. Let's go to Ticket. And we will call this um, my, my API tests. We'll categorize this. We'll call it general information. And I think that's all we need to do at this stage. Okay, so we've got 187. So let's go back into Swagger. Uh, this is going to be a, a JSON. Um, there are different content types there. So you've got XML there as well as, as JSON. So just go back into that. We did say 187, didn't we? So the first thing we need to do before we start populating these parameters is we need to authenticate ourselves. So if we click in here, you'll see here's a username and password. Now these have to be an account within Trackit. So I've got one called WA. So just uh, Web API is the name of my technician in TrackIt. So when you add this to authenticate, you will also need to use the group name. So system administration slash WA and the password. And so we'll authenticate it. OK, so now you can see that I there has confirmed we are actually in. And if we go to Track it 187. So the first thing I'm going to have in the ID is the number. And the next thing I'm going to do there is I'm going to populate this with some text. So you can see here we're following this description here with the properties. There's the example there with the braces. So the properties, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the category. So it's applications. If you recall, we currently have that category as general information close that down there as well. There we are, 187. We're going to add some additional information. Uh, so I've just put there additional information field is updated. 
and then I mentioned I'm going to populate one of the custom text fields. In this case, the sequence number was 85, so the uh, the syntax for that is uh, speech marks or double quotes, 85, close double quotes, colon, open brackets again, or quotes, whatever you want to call it, information, close brackets. And if you are populating, obviously, more, uh, more than one field in track it, then just have the commas there. And you can see I've closed the braces. So this is going to do three things for us here. It's going to update the category. It's going to add some information to that field. And it's going to update the custom type. If we just jump back into it now at the moment. There's that ticket there. Um, you can see custom text is added to here. It's, there's nothing there at the moment. If I double click into here, there's additional information, not populated, and general information there. Um, if the record is obviously locked, it's not going to update it, but let's click on try it out. Okay, so there we are. Res you are request URL has gone through there. There's all the response body. Let's jump back into track it. Let's do a quick refresh on there. And we can see here now my API test. Custom text one has been populated with my custom text. If I double click into there, we will see additional information has been added to that field and it's gone from general information to applications. So that's a quick overview on how the web API works with Trackit. As I said, there's a number of calls there. So if you go into the documentation, you'll be able to see what's available. And of course, I uh, hope that this was useful and informative and I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.